On today's episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to go back in time and look at the 1974 national champion, North Carolina State Wolfpack. Before we get into today's content, make sure you subscribe, folks. It doesn't cost anything. It's free of charge. Hit the bell notification to be notified of future videos like these on the Carolina Panthers, Charlotte Hornets, Carolina Hurricanes, and major sports in the Carolinas. Leave me some comments below. Smash that like button. All right, folks, Uncle Chucky here, Carolina sports guy. Kind of thought, you know, I've done a video now, basically. I just wrapped one up a little while ago on Coastal Carolina. Um, so you probably have either seen that one or look for it if it's, I haven't already got it out yet. But I kind of cover everything. So this is going to be the second video in this series I've done on North Carolina State. I, I did one on the football quarterbacks. Now I'm going to look at their 1974 national championship. Very impressive year. They finished 12-0 and in the ACC in 74. And you got to remember, South Carolina had just left just a few years earlier. So they were down to seven members. And that's why you got 12 games you play everybody one, or twice. So that's six other teams. And that's what they're 12-0. and But they had a 30-1 and overall record. Norm Sloan was the head coach. And they started the season at number two right behind number one UCLA. Now, key players on these, this team, seven-foot-four center Tommy Burleson. Uh, Tommy Burleson, man, this guy was would be, be the 74 NBA first, uh, uh, the number three pick in the first round uh, by the Seattle Supersonics. Had a pretty good career, played for some other teams. Um, I believe he also played for Kansas City and Atlanta. But he ended up sticking around for about, I guess he had about a six or seven year career. Um, he had 6-1 uh, Mo Rivers, a uh, very important player on the team. 5'7", Monty Tao, the little point guard from the state of Indiana. Very, very important, very crucial ball handler. Couldn't have won the championship without him. And, of course, out of Shelby, North Carolina, the big man, six foot four, David Thompson. And David Thompson had an impressive NBA career. He was drafted number one overall by Atlanta the very next year in 75. But he decided to sign with Denver, the ABA, for the Nuggets. Uh, remember him in the ABA All-Star game with a slam dunk, and he later go on and play for Seattle as well uh, when they were in the NBA. Um, but very impressive talent with the guys they had on this team. Um, some of the wins they had notable early on, they're going to play UCLA here on December 15th. Before they do, they win a couple of games. They beat East Carolina at Reynolds Coliseum, and they beat Vermont. Not impressive games. I just brought up East Carolina because they're kind of covered in topics of, such as this. But they're 2-0, and and they go to play UCLA on December 15th, and they're crushed by 18, 84-66. to And, of course, UCLA is the defending champion. Man, John Wooden's got that team playing. they got Bill Walton. They've had Lou Alcindor, who's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Just, you know, just a powerhouse if there's ever been a powerhouse. So then they drop down to number five. And they're going to have to build it back up, folks. So before the year plays out, a couple weeks later, December 29th, they go to the Sugar Bowl tournament, kind of honor of the football Sugar Bowl they play there on New Year's Day. And they beat number 18, Memphis State. Uh, and then the beginning of January starts, they're going to play the Big Four tournament, which doesn't exist anymore. But they're going to end up playing number four, University of North Carolina. And they're going to beat number four North Carolina. Of course, NC State's number five, so that's a pretty impressive win. So they did that on January 4th, and then they turn around the next day on January 5th, and they had to play Wake Forest for the championship of this Big Four tournament between the four Carolina schools, and they beat Wake Forest. So back-to-back -back games against Carolina number four and then Wake Forest. Now, about a week later, they got to play number three Maryland. By this time, I think Lefty Giselle's the head coach. State's moved up to number four. They beat Maryland 80 to 74, and I mean, man, he thought Carolina was to give them a, a, a fit. Maryland was tough, but they did handle them. Then, about nine days later, they play Carolina again, number four, North Carolina. It's still at number four. States moved up to number three. State ekes out a win, 83 to 80. Then we're going to get another week. By eight more days later, they got to play Maryland again. Maryland has dropped to number six. States number two. State beats them 86 to 80. So very close games between the, the, the Carolina game and, and, you know, beating Carolina by three, beating Maryland by six, beating Maryland by six. Close, close games. And they only have that one loss to UCLA. So then we get into February. 
uh, because now state's number two in the country. By February 20th, state's number one, UCLA has been beaten. NC State beats Duke 113 to 87, and that's when they're going to hold on to the number one ranking. About six days later, NC State has got to play number four UNC again, and they beat them 83 to 72. So they beat Carolina three times in this season. March to 8th, as we're getting into the ACC tournament, they beat University of Virginia 87 66, have no problem handling them in an opening round. And remember, it's kind of like the play in game because the other six schools had to play and they're the number one seed, so UVA. It's kind of like in that play in game. And then March 9th, they, they, they come around, they got to play Maryland again. And remember, Maryland was number six at one point, number three. They beat them by six, beat them by six. This was probably one of the greatest games, they say, in ACC tournament basketball history. It was 103 to 100. NC State went over Maryland. And, man, you got to understand, in these days, State loses that game, there's no NCAA tournament, and then there's no national championship. Because this was the last year that the NCAA – uh, in 74, that you had to win your conference tournament to go to the Big Dance. Only 25 teams were invited, folks. And, you know, today 68 are invited. This is only 25 that are invited. The champion of the most major divisions, you have some independents like Notre Dame and South Carolina were invited. That was one reason why South Carolina went independent. They felt it was too hard in the ACC. They could get in. And it's going to change the very next year in 75. They're going to start allowing other teams in, which I'm glad they did. It, you know, there's a lot of teams that wouldn't be champions if it wasn't for, for that aspect of it. So your first round, they're going to play the NCAA tournaments March 14th, and they got to play number five, Providence. Now, state's number one, and they beat Providence 92-78, a very prominent basketball school. That's a Sweet 16 game. Remember, I said they started with 25, so they didn't play in the play-in round. So that's a Sweet 16 game. Then the Elite Eight game, they got to play number 13, Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh had scored an upset earlier. And they're going to beat Pittsburgh 100-72. No problem with him, the Pitt Panthers. Now we get to the Final Four, and who are they up against? It's played in Greensboro, which is home to North Carolina. It's just an hour and change down the road, if that, from Raleigh. They got to play UCLA. And remember, UCLA is the one team that beat them, and they beat them pretty mightily. But evidently, NC State playing this game helped them out uh, because on March 23rd, NC State beats UCLA in double overtime, 80 to 77. And NC State advances to the championship game. Who are they going to play in the championship game? They're going to play Al McGuire and Marquette. And this is Marquette's, I believe, first attempt, if I'm not mistaken, at the championship game, just like NC State's first. I think Kansas was the other team that would lose the Constellation game to UCLA. They had been to five or six uh, Final Fours by then. And, of course, UCLA was 11 under their belt. They had lost the state here. But NC State's going to beat Marquette 76-64. to 64. Now, keep in mind, three years later, Marquette's going to win it all, the same coach, Al McGuire, as he beats Dean Smith and UNC in 77. So, Tommy Burleson, before we got into the NCAA tournament, was named the ACC tournament MVP, which is very big. And then David Thompson ended up winning the Final Four of the NCAA tournament, the Most Outstanding Player Award. Um, so, there you have it, folks. NC State 30-1, and one. great year, playing Carolina, beating them three times, Maryland three times, having to play UCLA the second time, especially as good as UCLA was, 30-1 and one record, and you've really got to give your hats off to the Wolfpack there in a situation like this. So what do you think of today's content, folks? Hit that like button. Leave me some comments. By all means, hit the bell notification to be notified of future content like this. And whatever you do, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, folks. And we'll see you next time on another episode. Carolina Sports Guy.